Um, today, we have someone who, um, you know, does a little bit more than music in the scene, and uh, I'm going to let them introduce themselves and let them uh, get into it. Hello, everyone. My name is Moon Magic. I'm a hip-hop artist, MC, intuitive, and educator, a.k.a. the hip-hop witch. Um, also, the creatrix behind Word Wizards Medicine. And I'm kind of a little bit of a jack of all trades. Uh, my main element is emceeing. Um, but, you know, I've produced a little bit over the last couple years, you know. Yeah. Um, work, you know, a lot within, like, hip-hop and education. Um, and just also curating content with people in the community who are dope artists. Um, as well as other intuitive kind of, you know, new agey stuff. Um, yeah, that's a little other things I kind of fuck with. Hey, yeah. So for the people who do not know, where are you from? So I'm from Moval. I'm from the IE, 951. Um, I was born I in Riverside. Know. Uh, grew up in Marina Valley, which is right next to like San Bernardino and the IE. Went out to school in Pomona in L.A. County for a college and then came out here to Sacramento and been out here ever since. So I really feel like a true Cali baby through and through because Most um, <laughs> having lived in SoCal for a majority of my life and then living in NorCal these last, you know, five to six years now. Oh, yeah. You know, like I just really love, you know, this entire state. <laughs> yeah. Shouts out to California, you know for having a lot of things to see and shouts out to mm -hmm. all the other states for having all the nature yeah i need to travel more i've only been to uh, nevada so uh yeah um what i'm gonna go to mount that? shasta actually for my first time y'all on november 4th so Ooh, if you're on mount gonna shasta be cool. i gonna will be cool. see you all there for the um for you know tour date i'm gonna announce soon but yeah, keep your ears open for that. And I've never been, so that's another thing. I, I feel like there's so much in California, like I still haven't seen or been to. Oh yeah, I need. I haven't even been to Humble yet. I haven't. There's Me a neither. lot Not of Humble. spots. Nope. I haven't. I haven't. I've been hit. to San Diego. I went skydiving in San Diego, actually. <laughs> that was a cool experience, y'all. I need to do that because I was that gonna was go on Lodi when I lived out crazy. there, but uh, yeah, no, <laughs> they got a bad rap out there. Not no disrespect to that spot, but yeah. Um, besides that, uh, how long have you, uh, been making music? Mm -hmm. So my experience with music really started at a young age. Like my grandma was always really into music. She was a director for her choir. She had like a piano growing up, you know, she like taught me how to make a song for like my parents anniversary one time. Um, but not like seriously until, uh, probably like towards the end of college time is when I started really being like what am I going to do after college and what do I really you know what am I actually doing yeah. you know I, before that I think it was always just more like a hobby something that I love to do like I had you know the first song I actually wrote over was Selena's Dreaming of You when I was in fifth grade mm. sixth grade I think with one of my friends oh you know we just created our own little version of it <laughs> shout out to Selena resting power queen um, Can't forever forget those times making those covers as kids, yes. just hearing a song on the radio. Just we had our own like cover band, and I was really into Totally Spies. Y'all don't judge me. So my uh, was name was Clover shit. at the time, and that was like my. I wrote mad songs about my cat, <laughs> my cat dying, and, oh, okay, that's and also like other family stuff, like you know. Life, yeah. So like you know, it wasn't until I actually got after school when I was like, man, what am I actually doing with things that I kind of like realized like it was something that I was so passionate about and you know wanted to dedicate more time and focus to oh yeah that's a that's a journey right there that's a journey mm -hmm. you, past couple of people man y'all been in this thing for quite some time I hella respect that it shows too you know just the structure behind what you guys do and everything it's respect man and this is why I'm glad to have the guests that I have had on my podcast and the guests I will have because I get to know a little bit more about you guys and you know I feel honored to know because you guys are dope I feel honored to know you too you yeah, dope yeah. too thank you thank you y'all check out that you. project Man. with eggs and chewy go check it out <laughs> Man, I got one coming out too with a uh, me and Dada dropping um October 31st and then I got some more stuff coming I'm trying to keep the young god mob yeah, trying Check to work with out. a lot of the local talent, man. It's just, there's too many dope motherfuckers out here. Um, mm -hmm. Sacramento's booming with talent, y'all. For surely, for surely. 
That's one thing about this doubt. city. Like, like, you know, like I said, I live in, you know, different parts of California. And Sacramento, I think the thing that has drawn me here is, like, something very unique about the art community, you know, the just the, you know, being next to the river, mm -hmm. you know, like, the history, being on that, you know, land, you know. Um, Le and, like, legit, all the artists in Sacramento, y'all. Legit, too. I just seen this the other day. Shouts out to Godfrey. He sent it to our uh, our group chat. Uh, DB about a bag. His uh his first off song, uh one of the ladies from um, uh Squid Game. I think she was the main one, right? I think that was probably. I think that was just fucking like a, a, like a it was fake basically, but oh. someone started that and it just kind of just took off. Oh. At the same time, uh, that to what he been doing. He's been he's, yeah, he's still been killing the game regardless. Yeah, he's oh, still yeah. been killing the game regardless. But yeah, I, I came across that post. I was like, oh shit, shout the fuck out. Shout out. Because I, I, you know, I let you say that he didn't advertise it at all. Like, he didn't no, post nothing he about did that. Shit, though. He did, yeah, so probably some fan created it. Yeah. Plus, you know, yeah, shout out to him. Yeah, uh, also shouts out to him for standing on what's real. He's like, nah, that didn't happen. Like, yeah, well, don't, don't do that. All right, for sure. Cool, no, he, yeah, that would have been like crazy. That would have been crazy, dog. Shout out to him. Oh, and Icy. Shout out to Icy. Yeah, man. No, Icy, you know, he's signing some Hell dope man. people. Hell got man. dope merch, man. Him and, oh my, they both killed him. Yeah, bro. But, um, yeah, so, um, you know, besides, let's, let's get off the music stuff. So, you said you were an educator. Yeah. So, how long have you been an educator? Let the people know. And like, if you um, if you feel like you want to go into detail about what type yeah, of education, yeah, I used to not talk about it as much. I think like trying to figure out how to balance like both realms, you know, mm -hmm. because education I think is something I'll always be passionate about. For sure. Because it's like going back to what I was saying before, Generation Y, like mm -hmm. questioning things. Like I'm curious, why is things like the way that they are? Mm -hmm. You know, and you're like, man, it comes down to education. Like Indigenous Peoples Day, like that being an official holiday, like that people are going to know that and question and start being like, oh, what does that mean? Like, right. you know, the importance of the what we were taught in school and the inaccurate uh, inaccuracy of it, you know? Facts. Um, so, yeah, I am a teacher. I started teaching in 2016. That's actually how I got to Sacramento, um, was through the teacher program that was I was a part of. Um, Sacramento definitely. was my location. And, yeah, I just kind of, like, questioned a lot I was just fresh out of school fresh out of college as I was ending college I was more and more getting into the arts you know like it was just my friends chilling kicking it you know at the Mecha house you know like smoking weed you know you know just listening to hip-hop throwing yeah. little open mics in the backyard you know um vibes and I graduated right when Trump became president so you know that was now I think college is like a big uh, missed, you know? Yeah. You think, and especially my generation, we're called the shadow magic generation. We're the generation that was told you do what you're supposed to do and you're going to get this cookie at the end of the road. But then when we got to the end of the road, the whole world was different. Right. So everything we did, we were like, wait, wait a minute. But we... <sighs> I want to relate to one thing like that. Where the, like, prime example. Well, they told us <laughs> that we had to write in cursive because we were going to use it later on. And I still write in cursive. <laughs> I still write in cursive because of that, and you know it irritated it irritated my teachers. It's only for like yes. nobody yes. nobody knows cursive anymore. Every time I do, it, like, bro, you do, do you not know how to write? I'm like, it's cursive. They're like, what really? I'm like, how do you not remember? What? But I guess they they don't do that anymore. Yeah, it's crazy. I don't even think they teach it in school anymore. Yeah, they, I'm almost I positive they don't. They probably do. Like, I haven't. Uh, I've seen a couple teachers maybe. use it before. But I, my curriculum was in fourth grade. So I taught sixth grade for three years. Oh, that's... Um, so I am like, whoa. I do have my credential. My, Shouts like, out to you for doing that because I know went that's... Went to school, like, got my master's grade. in urban education. So like I went through that kind of more traditional route. And during that time was a questioning a lot of like what I was doing. Why was I doing it? And just developing more and more like my love for hip hop, my love for art. My love for being able to self-express what I witnessed. And like, because one of my first college classes was... A multicultural studies class and being able to have these words to explain the things you grew up as you're like dang what the heck right and then hip-hop is like knowledge of self too right mm -hmm. so you like start learning side by side you're like what is going this is amazing you know so that was kind of like i think the two for me and me feeling like they're not separate is because i feel like that's what kind of uh, brought in my hip-hop journey was through that educate that self-education aspect self-education 
Yeah. Our government, every government should promote mm-hmm. that. Oh, they're not gonna pro- they're not gonna promote yeah. self education because still, you know they, why? They ask why. Take why away from their money. Yeah. 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 So. But uh, it's still you know it still amazed me like you know I respect teachers I respect everybody in the education system mm-hmm. because you know they go through a lot especially trying to reach out to students who are, excuse me make it hard to reach out too because me like when you said sixth grade that took me back to when i i just took myself back in my head to how i was in sixth grade i was a handful so dealing with uh 32 students you know that's 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 almost as a teacher right so you're with these these kids for you know a certain long period of time and you get to know them and you see your own sixth grade self you're like man i didn't even know how to deal with this kid right. when i was the other kid in this sixth grade scenario and you have to be the one who like solves those issues and a lot of times in classrooms they don't even want you to talk about these situations because it's all about the academics you right. know and so there's just so much that i think is fundamentally flawed with our education system that like that's like what kind of keeps me still in that field of like really wanting to learn more, wanting to still be a part, part of it. So I still do work within the school systems. Um, and it's always a blessing to have teachers like you, honestly. But I left it full time because it's, it is like, there are a lot of things that I think are fundamentally flawed currently with the system. And it's, you know, hard mentally. Salute to all our teachers out there. Not you for know, real. Like, for real. Like, and I want to give a special shout out to Miss Campbell. I still remember you from sixth grade. That was the first legit, first vegetarian I ever met in my life. And like, she like, she taught us a lot, like about like, it was, wasn't necessarily the curriculum, but, you know, she would try to sneak in her little stuff time to time. Not to necessarily yeah. sway us to be vegetarian, but she would let us know, like, you know, what was in the food that we're eating. And she mm-hmm. kept it real with us. Mm-hmm. And she would just educate us because they actually do care. And, you know, the mm-hmm. fact that you, you just said there's you you realize flaws in the education system. You want to be in there just, you know, try to iron those flaws out, you know, because any recall could get ironed. You know what I mean? Yeah. So... You know, I respect teachers who do that, and I just, you know, made me remember that person, so I had to give them a shout out. That's actually kind of similar. Like, I have a similar story with that too. That's kind of what got me interested in it. Was like, man, what is, what are we eating? You know, I'm telling you, the generation Y over here, y'all, gen question and everything. You know. Yeah, and it was crazy. It was crazy too, because like any group, she would do like the breakfast at the uh, end of the week type thing. And she would like cook all the stuff in there, but it was all vegetarian stuff. Mm-hmm. So she'd have mm-hmm. like. The waffles, the patties and stuff and everything. But it used to smell fire up in that mug, boy. I'm telling you. Oh man. But um, yeah, so uh, you know, shouts out to all the teachers again. Uh mm-hmm. y'all keep doing your thing, keep uh leading the kids to the right path and you know, if you see or feel like, you know, there's something wrong, definitely within your rights and within your will, try to stir the people the right way. Mm-hmm. So you don't get in trouble. <laughs> Because I know that you can't speak on religion in, in the classroom. There's a few things you're not allowed to. Yeah, but like that's yeah, she could have gotten in trouble for that. But like the fact that we were also like cool about it, you know, we mm-hmm. just never were like, oh, she's teaching us this. That we just kept it in the classroom mm-hmm. because like we knew the consequences of that. Yeah. So like we, you know. Yeah, that's the biggest reason. I feel For like real, she I, was I broke really away chill. from the full time. Is like that level of detachment to a degree where you're like, okay, I get to come in for a day, you know? It's not like you can still be a, a positive source within it, but I cared so much when I was teaching. I felt bad because I always wanted to do more, and there's only a certain level you can do because right. of those types of constraints, you know? Um, which you definitely like have to work within, you know? So, right. even like certain things that, you know, like, um, kids being hungry and like certain food that like is going to go to waste and they can't give a kid an extra right you know meal for it you know it's just like what is that you know there's certain things that you don't even understand why those exist right it's crazy it's it's a crazy world we're in but um nah so uh we're gonna get to the random stuff now this is the random side all right i had i'm trying to remember i don't want to look at the notes but i'm i'd like to be in my head with it um i had because all my questions are kind of like i have one that's usually general and then one that's directed specifically for the person i'm interviewing so with you what, what, what which one am i gonna do which one am i gonna do okay we could do that one if you could choose any spot 
any spot to own, let's say four acres of land, where would you move to own that four acres of land? And what would you do with that four acres of land? You're joking. You're really asking me this. Yes. That is crazy. No. This is wild because I feel like this is a question that like who really would ever think about that and actually have an answer to. And I swear maybe within the last two weeks, I actually had that answer. Oh my goodness. I would give it to the temple of hip hop for sure. That's what I would do. I would give it to the temple of hip hop. And I would want to build that to be under teacher care so I can have him be able to use it. That's what I would do and be part of that work. Hell yeah. I'm gonna have a four acre fighting ring, like the cell games. It's real. I'm joking. I'm fucking joking. You have fighting ring? No, nah, I'm joking. That was a joke. Boy, no I, way. Sitting in the middle of the ring, waiting a week for motherfuckers no to show way. up just for nobody to show up. I would be mad as fuck. Dang. Dang. Oh shit. Nah, I would probably like have like a studio. Um, Definitely, I would probably use one acre specifically for the studio and have make it a mission to get there just so I know for a fact no outside sounds are affecting anything. I'm going to have that motherfucker soundproofed everything. Um, I'd probably have a garage, like, more towards, like, because I'm going to have a gate, obviously, a gate around the four acres. Mm. Have a garage probably, like, a quarter mile. And then, like, from there you park your car and then have little go-karts and shit just to get to the main house. Like, have a little pathway, like, Mario Kart type shit. Yeah, It'd could you fun. imagine if you just had a city full of, like, hip-hop studios, though? That'd be that cool. would be cool. That's what I'm talking about. Wouldn't that be cool if we just had, like, a city, y'all, uh, a city of just a bunch of hip-hop? Hip-hop was everywhere. That would be so lit. Like, there's a studios. You know what I mean? Like, studios are, like, perks. <laughs> that would be so dope. That would be freaking lit. <laughs> Yeah, um, but I would want to cruise around that town. <laughs> hell yeah, for sure. Right down the skateboard. <laughs> right, just like what studio am I hitting today? Gonna have to bust out a longboard because I suck on skateboard. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was a longboard person myself, even though like I could do a few tricks on <laughs> skateboards, but like I was, I was, I wasn't really trying to do hella kickflips and shit and like bust my ass. I got into making longboards though, like getting the deck, swap, do all the building and shit. Like I got into mm -hmm. building boards. And that's where it was like. I don't know. It's like weird. I'll get into shit and then I'll like to get into the technical side of shit like music. Mm -hmm. I started with poetry, then rapping. I was like, fuck it. Let me get into producing, mixing, and mastering. Mm -hmm. It's like, I don't know. I get too technical with shit. I need to chill. <laughs> I need to chill. Like it's all art, right? You know yeah. what I mean? Like, well, I should just enjoy the, the basic side of shit sometimes, you know. I feel it. All right. So, um, uh, we, uh, where, where was the second one? Oh yeah, this is the random one. This is the the random one. All right. Um. A random one. Yeah. So, would you rather? <laughs> All right. <laughs> you already got me thinking. <laughs> would you rather be able to read everyone's thoughts for an hour or not be able to speak at all for an hour? Damn. Damn. That's a good one. I don't even know the answer to that one, honestly. Because if you think about it, like not being able to speak your own thoughts for an hour or be able to read everyone's thoughts for an hour. And it's like, you can't control whose thoughts you hear. You just yeah. hear everyone's thoughts. Like fry off each round. Yeah. Prime. Exactly oh, like that. Man. Man. Um, uh, <laughs> I'm going to take the silence. <laughs> I think I'm going to go with the hour of silence because I think if I'm around some wild motherfuckers who be playing their coup and I really hear their thoughts, I'm like, yo. Would I would just be looking at them like. I just am trying to think about, is it going to be one of those scenarios where I hear like 10 voices at mm -hmm. one time yep. and it's like, no, I would, mm -hmm. I would take the silence if that was the case. If it was like, uh, you know, zoning in here, like, Insane. you know, like an eagle, then maybe, yeah. you know, maybe. Maybe, maybe you can. But if it was like all at once. All right, we could, we could, we could narrow it down. Every, anyone you look at, anyone in your like peripheral. So like, if I'm looking right here, I'd get Yum's thoughts and Godfrey's thoughts. 
Yeah, let's just stick with the silence. <laughs> Keep it simple. I don't know that that might be cool because if you don't you know you don't see anybody but they're still in your like peripheral type thing you know they might be trying to like snake you on some some ninja shit you know you hear that thoughts like oh look at him he's about that might help I don't know I'm random <laughs> I'm random <laughs> but um no nah, yeah that that yeah silence is the whole room got some good questions y'all silence is the whole room hell yeah um and then of course the main question that everyone, every hip hop artist or every fan of rap, hip hop or music in general, who is your, in your top five? If you can name them. Because a lot of people. The Paris one definitely, you know. Um, Idea, Idea was probably the person who, that definitely was the person who got me into rapping. Like me actually being like, man, I want to be an MC. Like specifically, I want to figure this shit out. Um, Idea is just, First born broke my freaking mind, and then his battling skills. I mean, yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, Ciroc, the goddess MC, I think she'd definitely be up there for sure. Um, Gavlin and got like that whole crew of underground women. I think, like, you know, Blondes, Brixton, Bell, Reverie, Gavlin. Um, and does Erica Badu count? I yeah. mean, you know, she is technically the mom of hip hop, right? <laughs> she counts, she Erica Badu counts. for sure. She like, counts. That's, right. That's mom. <laughs> Erica Badu. Um, yeah. So I, I think just Badu for obviously so uh, and level level of an artist like her artistry. Um, definitely. That kind of like that level of like wanting to do art on a level of like more artistry than just like oh, okay I'm gonna do a video and I'm gonna be just rapping. It's like how right. can I take it to a, a, that kind of level? Right. Um, Erica Badu definitely was like a lot of inspiration behind like the colors video and me wanting to do something that was really out of my element of like body paint. Okay. I'm gonna be body painted and go in front of this camera. I did not um, know that. But yeah, it's a level of the different artistry of like wanting the message and the concept of that song to get across. And she definitely is a big inspiration. That is, um, I've never heard that top five ever. And when I got to meet her, y'all, I told her I love ever. her. And she said, I love you too. And I thought that, she, I believe she meant it, y'all. <laughs> oh, no. Did you I buy her like incense? I was like three in the morning, waiting outside. To go to <laughs> Did you buy her incense? Um... I have not. Okay. Yeah. But I should, y'all. Yeah, I should. I'm, I, your boy I thinking about Calvin. I don't know. Mm. I have my Jill Scott versus Erica Badu versus shirt, though. Ooh, that, thing, that was fire. That <laughs> was fire. That shit was fire. These versus battles of the Man. Paris won, Big Daddy King on. That, that yeah, day. that's that's going to be the. Cause peop, yeah, I people, know, man. Thing. Big Daddy King, a lot of people forget. Like, he had a whole fucking movement. For like a solid minute, so did fucking KRS One though. So it's like, yeah, they have done so much for the culture. For real, for sure. I was just I didn't I wasn't expecting that matchup though. What makes you say that? That was like a random one for me because it's like I was you know it's I don't know it's like because no one can go against KRS One. <laughs> like they out you know I thought they probably would have put Papoose up against him or something like that like. That might have been like, I don't know. That's just me. That's just me. This might be dope though. Like, I don't know. Cause like the same thing with uh, Fat Joe and uh, Ja Rule. I didn't think that was like, you know, I thought that was like kind of like they they vibing like. But oh, that boy Fat Joe was on some shit, boy. That <laughs> nigga was talking Nemo shit. <laughs> that they want to believe, you know, rather be your Instagram music videos, uh, any albums or songs you're about to drop, any, you know, websites, anything, merch, you know, let the people know. Yeah, for sure. So, um, first thing, definitely check out that Word Wizards playlist that just dropped, Vibrations. It has so much amazing, dope local talent and actually some national talent on there as well. So check that out. The link is in my profile as well as the Word Wizards page. Um, also, I just dropped a music video called Colors, so if you haven't checked it out, go check it out. That link is in my bio. I have a music video out coming out next month, so keep an eye out for that, as well as some tour dates that I'm announcing. One in Sacramento at the House of Dance. I believe that's an old sack. Is that the right name of it? I think mm -hmm. it's a That little open spot that they always have the, the DJ right there. Yeah. It's a dope spot. It's right outside on the river of old sack. Come out, y'all. Come dance with me. Come hang out. It's going to be a vibe. I'm also going to be um, out in Mount Shasta, too, so I'm going to be announcing that soon. 
can follow me at at Moon Magic Flows um, on Instagram and all social media platforms. This has been Smoking Wax, you know, where we always talk about that real shit. Oh, yeah. Oh, sounds a Lulu. <laughs>